7,500 homeless individuals on our streets in San Francisco, 1,200 homeless families with two kids on average each. Th this is unacceptable. We can't have on one side the most prosperous, most successful, and as you can see behind me, the most beautiful city in the world. And on the other hand, we have a humanitarian crisis of epic proportions. Uh, this is turning into a crisis of inaction and indifference, and we need to just put a stake in the ground and stop it, and that's why I'm There are over 4,000 beds for the homeless, and last night they were at capacity. Coincidentally, just as the deep freeze set in, the city set out last night to conduct its annual count of the homeless population. Last year, the total was about 5,400, but advocates argue the actual number is far higher with not enough help for the mentally ill or anyone living out on the streets. We're concerned about homelessness all year round and the fact that the city is not doing enough to address the problem. And if we were, then we wouldn't have homeless people on the street on these really cold nights. Again, if you are in need of any assistance, call the city's 311 system. The U.S. homeless population is growing for the first time since the end of the Great Recession in 2010. A one-night government census earlier this year counted nearly 554,000 homeless people, and that's up nearly 1 percent from 2016. This is what surging homelessness looks like in Silicon Valley. Take a look at this. People living in RVs parked along major streets. Maria Virial shows us how the high cost of housing... Thirteen years ago, when I first started walking these streets, I could not believe what I was seeing. Here's this great big human corral, this place where um, everything fell apart and so much suffering. I I'd come away depressed and feeling helpless, unable to begin to describe to friends, to family, to colleagues what this looks like and what it feels like. And I'm always a little bit ashamed that in a country of such great riches, um, we can't do better than this. What happened 12 and 13 years ago was that when the powers decided that they needed to do something, they intended to do the right thing, and then the crash hit. The crash stole some of the resources that were intended to make long-term differences. But 13 years later, billions of dollars later, many, many political promises later. I think it's safe to say that the situation is no better, and you could even argue that it's gotten worse. I think that's one reason why today, as you travel greater LA, you see skid rows everywhere. I mean, there, there are maybe a thousand skid rows now in greater Los Angeles, tent colonies just about everywhere you go. It screams out for a different approach. And as we've entered this period, kind of a flat economy in terms of wages for working people, while simultaneously our rents have gone up, just skyrocketed. Neighborhoods have changed because of it. So many people are one bad break, are one layoff away from desperation. People being evicted and have nowhere else to go in this housing market are landing on our doorsteps all over the city. You, you drive on uh, city streets and you see an encampment under an overpass. You see people in city parks. You see them on the beaches. You see them along the river. And there is just nowhere near the amount of housing or services to begin to chip away at this problem. It's like we're in a leaky boat and we're bailing it with a, with a teaspoon. We're just not keeping up.
we're going to take you to Bogota, Colombia, where Vice President Mike Pence is speaking after meeting with the country's president and with Venezuelan opposition leader Juan Guaido. We are with you, 100 percent. We stand with you in America, along with all the nations gathered here today. And we will keep standing with you until democracy and your libertad are restored. The reality is that today, more than nine out of 10 people in Venezuela live in poverty. The average Venezuelan has lost 20 pounds through deprivation and malnutrition, and the economy has shrunk by half. Thousands of children are starving at this very hour. 7,500 homeless individuals on our streets in San Francisco, 1,200 homeless families with two kids on average already the most of any nation on earth just in the last two weeks we've sent five military transport aircraft with 400 tons of food and medicine to colombia and brazil as president duque and i discussed today our efforts to date will not only continue they will be increased despite maduro's brutality we will press on as we speak, we're identifying new areas along the border where we can pre-position additional aid for the struggling people of Venezuela. Today also, it's my privilege to announce that the United States will provide an additional $56 million. <laughs> to support our partners in the region as you come to the aid of the Venezuelan people of the Maduro regime. In the days and weeks ahead, the United States will continue to deliver life-saving food for the hungry, medicine for the desperately ill, and shelter for those displaced by the brutality and deprivation of the regime.